Do you like making anime art style images? If so, then you'll probably love and imagine XL 3.0. This is a newly released stable diffusion XL based model which focuses on doing exactly that anime style images. This iteration boasts superior image generation with notable improvements in hand anatomy, efficient tag ordering, and enhanced knowledge about anime concepts. Unlike the previous iteration, this time they focused on making the model learn concepts rather than aesthetics. So you may want to try your deep anime knowledge on this one. Just a quick note before I go on, this model has a fair AI license, which while not technically a free license, it does provide as much freedom as it can, which is pretty cool. Note especially the prohibited uses at the bottom, and with those acknowledged, let's get into it. Being a model, this will work in Automatic 11.11, Comfy UI, or anything else that supports SDXL models. You'll want to use the standard SDXL resolutions, which are listed on the model card in case you don't know what they are. Also on the model card are some recommended negative prompts and positive prompts too. Obviously you don't have to use these, I've tested with and without them and they're still pretty good, but I do like reading the instructions on stuff and using those before experimenting and exploring. There's a whole variety of special tags here and they include things such as year modifiers from newest down to oldest which can help guide some of the styles. Quality modifiers like the classic masterpiece all the way down to worst quality can also help steer the result toward or away from that particular quality. For optimal results their suggestion is to use that positive prompt format there so one girl stroke one boy character name from what series and anything else in whatever order. They also recommend using a guidance scale of between 5 and 7, sampling steps below 30 and the Euler Ancestral Sampler. But do I follow recommendations all the time? Nah, of course not, which is why I've made this stonkingly huge 70 meg XY grid to compare samplers for you to make your own mind up. So I've got FreeU disabled at the top and FreeU enabled at the bottom just in case that makes any difference and you can see a whole range of samplers across the top. Now obviously some of these are better than others and I'll let you make your own mind up as to which ones look the best. There's Euler A, certainly one of the favourites of mine alongside Euler. There are some other good ones in here, DPM++ 2SA. I think is pretty good. Much of the other ones are fairly meh and with some of them you do indeed get that burning. There's some very bad colour blowout there so those certainly not recommended for this particular model although a lot of the samplers do seem to work quite well. If I keep scrolling over a little bit to the right there are some other good ones in there. DPM++ 2SA Karas fairly reasonable. Restart also looks very good there and uni PC at the end. Okay, time for some more tests. I think a lot of people focus on humans, however, I like to test a wide variety of things, especially rodents, as they make for excellent art subjects. And what about their prompting suggestions? Do I really need to be constrained in that way for the best results? Well, let's find out. Test number one. What it should be good at is people, portraits and whatnot, but what about classic masterpieces such as the Mona Lisa? I'll keep their suggested negative prompting, but for the positive prompt, let's keep it really simple and see what happens. There she is, all right, let's click on that for a bit of a larger image. Wow, I'm actually slightly impressed. That doesn't usually happen. I was kind of expecting the actual Mona Lisa, but this really is an anime style version of her. The pose and the background are somewhat familiar, but otherwise it's totally different and in that full on anime style. Fair enough. Okay, what happens if you rip out that negative prompt? How effective are those tags? Well, a quick render will tell us. Oh, that's 
that's quite funny. Let's click on her again. Very anime styled and still very different from the original Mona Lisa. I like it. Uh, okay, all right. How about with just some very minimal negative prompts? Oh, that's funny. Okay, so I've only got not suitable for work, worst quality and cropped in there. And uh, we'll click on it again. And it's still very anime styled and still very different. I like it. I like it. One more Mona Lisa then before moving on. But this time, let's throw in some of those quality and style era tags like newest and best quality in the positive prompt and some more of the suggested negatives. Now you can see I've got newest and best quality in the positive and a, a great big long negative prompt. And that has completely changed the image. Mona has popped out of a painting now. Gone is the pose, the background or indeed practically anything related to the Mona Lisa. But she is very anime styled now for sure. That means it's time for test number two. Not people this time, but other animal subjects uh, such as rodents. Can it even do these? I guess we'll find out. So here I've got a rodent scientist with vibrant colours and a fairly minimal negative prompt. We can pop that one open and there we have a rather cool looking rodent. All right, yes, it can do rodents. That's certainly a good sign for any model. But what about if I extend those negative prompts once again, like they suggest, will he become even more awesome? So here I've got a Full selection of negative prompts, no bad hands, extra digits, cropped, worse quality and all that. Uh, oh, oh, that's not quite what I expected. Um, All right. So it seems less could be more, certainly in this particular test case. All right, fine. Let's switch animals, keep that negative prompting somewhat limited and uh, see what happens then. How about a nice cow wearing a jacket? Some minimal negative prompts. What does that come out like? Oh, isn't he cute? Look at his little jacket. All right. Now, once again, will extensive negative prompting ruin him as well? I know it seems mean, but we're going to do this for science, right? So the same positive prompt, but once again, we've got that massive great string of negatives. What does that turn out like this time? Uh, I suppose it hasn't ruined it as much as with the rodent test, though once again, I think the previous cow was better, much cuter. I know what you're thinking now, as it isn't a person, what happens if we completely remove those negatives? Will our cow suddenly become super awesome? A quick generate there, same positive, no negatives. And oh, oh dear, our studio audience says no. This is just as pants as with excessive negative prompting, it would seem. Of course, I'm not following their prompt style suggestion. So what happens if I do actually go more like they suggest? Um, it's not one boy or one girl. So obviously I need to use one cow here and an anime style of some sort as well. Oh, oh, that is pretty cool. All right, not as cute as the original cow, but certainly a very decent output. Time to stop milking this, I suppose, and reach a conclusion for this fully scientific and extensive non-human testing. I would personally say go easy on those negative prompts, not too few and not too many. Test set number three is vegan friendly as we're going animal free to investigate the world of objects and places. How about a nice vase in a museum case with some fairly minimal prompts? Ooh, all right, we'll zoom that. That's pretty good. I didn't ask for flowers, but as they do go with vases, I'm all right with that. I have a suspicion that bulking out that negative prompt will once again have a negative impact. But let's see if my suspicions are correct. This time I've got that chonking great negative and the image here is, well, I'll let you decide for yourself. But once again, I prefer the previous one with the minimal negative prompting. How about a house then? This time with a little more positive prompting. So I've got a style. I've also got midnight, moonlit and high contrast. Oh, that's interesting. 
OK, so high contrast in this case has generated a black and white image. That's nice to know. But what does it look like if I take high contrast off? Very different image, and it is indeed in full color. So high contrast will give you those rather cool black and white images. One more then, how about some nice vegetables here? I've got a plate of vegetables on a table, once again with a different anime style, some deep colors, carrots and cabbages and peppers, and oh, yeah, that is a definitely a very different style and looks pretty cool. Those do look very delicious. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm certainly very impressed with this model. I wasn't sure if it would do anything other than people or how it would handle all these different styles, but it really seems to have pulled through. For the link to the model, you can look down in the video description. And of course, there are many more styles and subjects for you to test, though I'll completely understand if you'd much rather watch another Nerdy Rodent video instead.